Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know I come back with that second video just to make you think. Now basically we had the Homeland Security, Department of Homeland Security give a warning for November 4th of an EMP attack. Now guys, this is the same date. The same date they put this out, guys, is the same date they did the sanctions on Iran. Don't forget, what did they do? They stole the oil and then told them where it was going. So guys, just make sure that you are protecting yourself. Now we know anytime we've ever been attacked has been our own government. So guys, this is just a warning. Make sure that you're protecting your assets. Make sure you are prepared just in case anything happens. Now we know majority of times when they release things like this, nothing happens. It's just the fact is that it's fear, just spreading fear, but you still want to protect yourself. Now we know an EMP would knock out our grids no electricity and don't forget that Nikola Tesla wanted to go wireless correct so the fact is where did he get this information from from the ancient Egyptians guys basically we always been able to go wireless but the fact is that JP Morgan did not want to do that why did they spend trillions of dollars keeping this up because the fact is they want to have control guys total control Remember, there's always a plan in place. Enjoy the video. Electromagnetic pulse attack, which would literally destroy the country's capacity to function. An electromagnetic pulse attack, or EMP. Attack. It's been the stuff of fiction on the Fox show 24. It's an EMP! But it's also a real threat, experts say, and it likely wouldn't look like that. An EMP attack, they say, is an intense burst of electromagnetic radiation it can be triggered by detonating a nuclear weapon at high altitude, a weapon that could be launched by a rogue nation or a terrorist group with access to it. Detonated low to the ground, atomic weapons have a devastating physical shock. But detonated miles up in the atmosphere, experts say, the main impact is electrical, energy that doesn't kill people but spreads like lightning, striking any electrical grid or circuitry, feeding into them, burning them out. Whole cities could go dark. Security analyst James Carafano has written about EMP attacks. In one single event, what could be disabled? If you had a large-scale EMP event in the United States, you would, everything would be disabled. Because even things that, that, that weren't knocked out, let's say your car, which might be okay, but the electrical grid is going to be gone. There's going to be no way to do traffic lights. There's going to be no way to land ships. There's no way to get fuel to the gas stations to refuel your car. And if you got them there, the gas pumps wouldn't work. Think of this fictional attack in the movie Ocean's Eleven. We demonstrated electromagnetic interference on a much smaller, less threatening scale at the University of Maryland, showing how magnetic fields from some electronic devices often interfere with other devices. You hear this ringing behind me? We're showing you what electromagnetic interference is. Say this television is a car. The car's function is rolling along normally. Here's a cell phone ringing. When it gets close to that, you can see how the audio of the television signal changes. You can hear the interference. That's essentially it's interfering with the car's function. But with a large-scale EMP attack, experts say, computers would fail, telecommunications cut off, bank accounts inaccessible. They say that's because the transformers that power many electrical grids take a long time to manufacture and transport. And with transportation knocked out by the attack, that prolongs the isolation. Brian Todd, CNN, Washington. This is video from a NASA space probe back in 2012. It shows a massive solar flare, something called a coronal mass ejection, that hurled trillions of tons of highly charged solar plasma into space. How fast? Nearly 7 million miles an hour. This was its relation to Earth. Our planet would have taken a direct hit had we been nine or 10 days farther along in our orbit around the sun. Fortunately, these don't happen very often, but UNLV physics professor Michael Pravica says a direct hit to Earth would quickly get dicey. The moving charged accelerated particles from uh, the sun coming into the uh, ionosphere, coming into the magnetosphere of the Earth, essentially will create a lot of unpredictable events. Unpredictable like a beautiful aurora that might be seen as far south as the Caribbean, but perhaps devastating to most electronics. So 
anything that runs on solid state electronics, which is just about everything, ATM machines, um, anything that, that would be run on the solid state electronics computers would be uh, kind of fried, literally fried. And because a similar electromagnetic pulse can be caused by a nuclear detonation in the atmosphere over the U.S. by a rogue nation, EMPs are firmly on the federal government's radar because of tensions with countries like North Korea and Iran. President Trump signed this executive order in March of 2019, calling on the U.S. Departments of Defense, Homeland Security, and Energy to make the U.S. more resilient to an EMP, a threat with the potential to knock out electricity over wide regions of the nation for extended periods of time. Our neighbors in Wyoming have begun that work on a state level. Planning for a long-term power outage, um, it could be due to a, a solar flare or coronal mass ejection, as well as some sort of um, adverse serial type event um, is something that we, we are talking about. It's a low probability, but a very high risk event. Shazad Latif, Vice President of Transmission with NV Energy, says there would likely be power outages across the electrical grid caused by an EMP, but NV Energy and its partners in the western U.S. are working hard to shield equipment to minimize damage and the length of the outage. Every equipment is being assessed on what the impact can be, and then we determine how we can protect our assets. Nevada is in very good shape, but it's the entire grid, the interconnected grid that matters. Latif says Nevadans should also think about preparation, what you'd need to do during a prolonged power outage until repairs are made and your high-tech life returns to normal. Every technology that you use, you have to be prepared on your contingency plan that if that technology does not exist, how would you communicate? I received a statement from the state. They say the Nevada Department of Public Safety, Division of Emergency Management, and the Office of Homeland Security continuously work with federal, local, and tribal partners regarding potential threats, and they regularly hold training for emergency preparedness and response. Back to you. The inventor Nikola Tesla dreamt of wireless power. Among his work in the realm of electricity, he built a coil, later named the Tesla coil, which could illuminate lamps from across a room and throw the occasional bolt of lightning at the nearest conductor. Tesla coils remain popular today, though often for their ability to put on a fantastic lightning show. Nikola Tesla believed in wireless power with such an enthusiasm that, with the financing of J.P. Morgan, he constructed a giant apparatus, the Wardenclyffe Tower, at his lab in Shoreham, Long Island in 1901. This was before the world was wired. Way back then, when people were thinking about electricity and how people might use it, I don't think it ever occurred to them that people would string wires all over the country. Early on, people were thinking about transferring power wirelessly. The idea? To send wireless power around the globe. We love electricity so much, human beings love it so much, that we've been willing to put in wired power everywhere. I'm sure if you go back to Tesla's time, he wanted to do things wirelessly and experimented with it because he thought, who would be crazy enough to put in the trillions of dollars of infrastructure that we've put in? 